Hi guys, in this video I show you how to create a, extend a C-sharp class without using inheritance or composition. Uh, and of course we'll get started after the fade. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to create a new project. So we're going to go and do that. And I'm just going to create a C-sharp project. So this is inside Visual Studio. We're not going to bother with uh, any um, Unity just now, but it doesn't really matter. We don't need to, to do that. So I have my console application here and I'm going to call this function uh, no, I'm not going to call it extending uh, classes in C Sharp. Uh, there's actually a companion video. There should be a an, a, a card somewhere up there um, showing the companion video in, in C++. So this is uh, extending classes in, in C Sharp. So I'm going to create a, a class uh, and the class is going to be called Looper. And my class is going to take in a public looper and start and end. Um, let's start, start equals start. Let's start end equals end. And I am going to have um, uh, two member fields there. And then I'm going to have a display function, public void display. Uh, and that display function is going to be uh, for int i equals uh, start. i is less than i. I, 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 I is less than or equal to n. So it's going to be inclusive. I plus plus, and then I'm just going to do console dot right line uh, I. Okay, I'm just going to display something out onto the screen. All right, so this is my kind of starter for ten class. I'm not. Uh, I'm just thinking about what I need to do to code this. Um, so I I just want this class to display from a start number to an end number, and then that's it. So. Um, Let's have looper loop uh, equals new loop one to ten, and then I am going to have oh right at the very bottom here I want to have console dot read line because uh, I just want to wait for the I want to pause the the ending so that it's trapped there, and then I want to do loop display. Okay, so hopefully you've. You're, you're getting all this. So I have a class called looper and I have a constructor that takes in two parameters, which is a start value and an end value. And then I have a public method called display that goes from, that loops from that start value to that end value inclusive. So it's going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 10 for my example. And it's going to display it out to the console. So this is the code that I have now, which is I create an instance of that class and then I call the display function on it, which is going to display all those numbers. And then I, uh, I do a read line at the end just to keep it on screen. So when I run this program, uh, it takes a couple of seconds to compile. And you'll see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way down there. And that's it. I'm done for that class. Or am I? What, what if I want to extend that class? What if I, what if I don't want to have all the numbers in there? What if I want to have all the even numbers or if I want to have all the odd numbers? What's a way of doing that? And one of the ways is to actually pass in a delegate. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to uh, create a new, um, I'm just going to call it new item class and I'm going to call this um, validate delegate. And uh, I'm going to get rid of this class because I don't actually need it. And I'm going to create a delegate. Now, a delegate is kind of like in C++, you have function pointers. Uh, and again, that the parent class, to the, the parent video to this is, is floating around somewhere in one of the cards. Uh, a, function a, a delegate allows me to call a function that I don't know at the time of writing this. So someone else can come along and use my class and get it to call their function and then my class can then do something different based upon the input from there. But I need to know, I need to know the interface of that input I, when I'm writing this. So I need to know that it takes in certain parameters, that it returns certain parameters. 
Um, and the way I do that is I write the delegate. So I write the delegate and then the, the delegate definition and then someone else comes along and writes the, the actual code to call. So my delegate is going to look like this. Delegate void. So it's not, uh, sorry, it's, it has to return something. Bool. And then I'm going to call this validate uh, number. Uh, and it's going to take in uh, a number. Okay. So that is my delegate. My delegate is just validate number. All right. So I'm just taking in a number and then I return a Boolean value. So inside my looper, I can then pass this in as a function, as a, as a parameter to my, my uh, constructor. So I can do validate number, validate number. Okay. So again, there's no mistakes, it's perfectly valid. And so I can now have validate number, validate number. All right. And I can do this dot validate number equals validate number. There's a lot of validate numbers going on there, but you, you get the gist of it. This is a parameter. This is a field. Uh, the field is being assigned a value from the parameter. It's similar to this, this step up here where I do int start and end, and I assign them to there. It's the, the exact same thing. The difference is, though, this is a delegate. So if I do validate number, and then I press a bracket there, you'll see that it's it's like a first class function. It's It just works like a function, which is superb because now what I can do is I can go down to here and then I can decide how to, or what values I want to display. So let's say we create a, a variable here called is valid. And we always default it to true. So if is valid, right out there okay so super redundant it's always going to be valid that's always going to be true um but this uh so this is always going to get displayed but what if we added something in between there that said uh let's check to see if we have this function this delegate and if we do have this delegate we should call it and then use that return value because this returns a boolean and it takes in an integer. So we can then do if valid number, which is my, is not equal to null, uh, I can call this and I can put the value in here because I can do is valid equals validate number and then I can specify the number which is just int. So now I have my I check to see if, if I have a function, and if I have a function, I call that function my delegate. I'm delegating, this is where the delegate comes in, I'm delegating responsibility to another part of the code. So wherever that is, it's, it could be in another class, it could be in another you know, um, C++ file, it could be, sorry, C Sharp file, it could be anywhere. It just has to have the same function signature as this. So it has to return a Boolean value, and it has to take in an integer value. So I call that there, I call my delegate, and my delegate then decides whether it returns true or it returns false. And now, this bit of code here changes everything. So if I go to my program now, and you see that looper takes in that, if I pass in null, uh, and I rebuild it, then I still get the same values that I thought I was gonna get. But what if I have public, uh, sorry, uh, static bool is even. So now I have a function here which matches my signature, the signature of my delegate. It returns a Boolean value and it takes in uh, an integer value. So if I do return number mod2 equals zero, that means it's going to return true if the number we have is an even number, because anything divided by two equally, in other words, there's no remainder, means it's an even number. So two divided by four is two remainder zero. Five divided by two is two remainder one, so that's an odd number. So now, instead of passing in null, I can pass in the name of this function. So 
and now when I display, now what's going to happen is when I call display, if I press F12 on when I'm on display, it's going to check to see if valid number is not equal to null, which it isn't. It's now, it's now a function. It's now going to call is even. And then it's going to return true if that function returns true. Okay. So now when we run it, we should see the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And there we do. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I've delegated the responsibility of deciding what values should be displayed. Um, and the way that uh, there's, there's a lot of other things we can do in C Sharp, but uh, it kind of, you know, um, uh, well, should we do that? No, let's leave that for another video. Um, yeah, let's leave that for another video. Uh, so there, yeah, there you go. Uh, I have a class. Um, I choose not to extend it any further, but what I could do is I could have static bool is odd. And then I could do return number plus two equals one. Uh, sorry, mod two equals one. So instead of, um, instead of, Instead of checking if it's zero, check if it's one. So that means it's an odd number. So now I change my function, my uh, my constructor call to pass in the is odd function. Compile it, run it, and now I get one three five seven nine. So I get two completely different uh, outputs from the same class, and that's that's sort of an introduction to delegates for you. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. Uh, the C++ version of the, the video is uh, across here. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.